Hello, hello, my friends. Taking on a couple easy and fun parts today. Uh, they are the circular pattern part, which is also known as, I believe, the circular flange plate. Maybe that's the old name for it. I don't know. Here it is. This is what it looks like. It's like some kind of, you know, brake pad or flange plate, whatever that. Oh, yes. Make the following flange plate. We Google what a flange plate is. It's interesting. Uh, the other one we're doing is the rectangular pattern. So let's go ahead and jump into the circular flange plate. You can see that I've made the sketch right here. Uh, there is the sketch. Now, the key to this sketch is there's this little dotted line right here, and all of the dimensions, the vertical dimensions, the, three point, the 0 0.375, 1 inch, and 2.5 inches, they all go to that, uh, that line right there. And that is a construction line, which if you think back all the way to unit 2, means that it's not a, actually a part of the uh, object itself like an object line is it's just something that helps us line everything up and you know uh not a lot well you know just just keep the sketch geometry in order so you can see right now it's not a construction line it's an object line which technically would work but if we want to make it a construction line we should right click on it and uh will that work maybe it won't we can click on it and oh because dimension selected pardon me let's unselect dimension hit escape a couple times and then we'll go right up here and can we make it a construction oh if we go right here to construction line we can just turn that right on you can see this button right here that's the construction button right you can turn it on and off and if it's turned on then any line that you draw will well it wasn't on my bad any line that you draw, if you turn on this one, will be a construction line, circle, etc. So there you go. There's the construction line button. There is the construction line itself. I think we're ready to revolve this thing. Oops, I clicked extrude. Let's do revolve instead. So it's already pre-selected the profile. It saw the closed loop and it knew what I wanted. Now I just need to click on the axis. There it is. I always have a good time playing with this button. I don't know why. Maybe it's a little childish, but whatever. There it is, 350 degrees. I'm going to go to 360, and we'll click OK. Now we need to put the hole in. So let me look up the specifications for the hole. Looks like the hole is 1.65 above the, uh, pardon me, above the center of the part right there. And it is also, let's see, what is the diameter of that hole? I really can't see. I believe it's 0.5. Let's go here, and uh, we'll start a 2D sketch right where we want it. And, yeah, okay, is that is that going to work? Start 2D sketch right there. Can we do it? Okay, there we go. We did it. Uh, and we'll go ahead and we'll put, actually, you know what? We'll do it the real way. We'll put the point in right up there. One good one thing we could do is we could just kind of scroll up until we see that Y at 1.6. Five, five, maybe we'll put it right there that's pretty close then we'll just dimension that to the uh, the origin here uh oh looks like we're gonna have to put a point at the origin also there we go now we'll dimension the difference from there to there the distance pardon me 1.6 1 1.65 let me just double check that don't trust my memory too much uh, yes 1.650 oh, perfect Okay, we'll tr green check that, and then we'll put ourselves a hole right there. Just a regular old through hole, 0.5 inch radius, and uh, or pardon me, 0.5 inch diameter. We'll go ahead and apply that. There we go. It turned it isometric. Now, whenever I'm doing a circular pattern, uh, I like to have it isometrically viewed. Remember that circular pattern, there's two of them. There's the 3D model circular pattern and there is the sketch circular pattern. You can notice that the sketch circular pattern is not highlighted right now, or it's not available right now. That's simply because we don't have a sketch, right? So if you're, three, if you're patterning a sketch feature, you wanna use that one. This one obviously is a 3D modeled hole. So I'm gonna use this circular pattern. I'm gonna click on the hole because I want to feature that. And then I can click on literally any of these circles and it'll work. There are 10 holes right there. I'll click okay. And we're good. Now, the last thing to do, which I might not include on the video, but I'll put the start of it on there, is to uh, make ourselves a little rectangular notch. Uh-oh, project geometry didn't, didn't work. Ah, it did work. Okay. To uh, project, uh, to make ourselves this little notch right there. So I'm going to go ahead and start a sketch right there. Uh, I'm going to project the geometry and then put myself a little rectangle and just do a simple cut extrusion to make that. Uh, so we'll 
We'll just call it there, though. I'll, I'll let you guys finish that part of it. All right. So moving on, um, let's go down here. Let's do the rectangular pattern. We'll just make this the pattern video. Um, let's see. We're going to make a 6-inch by 4-inch rectangle, and we're going to extrude it to a depth of 0.5 inches. Okay. That we should be able to do. We'll start a new part, new uh, standard.ipt, start a 2D sketch. And uh, we'll make ourselves a rectangle. This is going to be a 6 by 4 inch rectangle. I'm going to enter it in right there. Let's take a look at it, make sure everything's good. Yep, 6 inches, 4 inches. All my geometric constraints are in place. So we'll go ahead and do this. Let's see, what am I going to do? I'm going to extrude it. We'll extrude it right there. Uh, 1 inch, uh, no, 0.5 inches. Okay. And then let's take another look at this. Let's see, use the following image from the sketch to draw the circle that will become the peg used in the pattern. All right, so that is a half inch from each edge and it's a 3.3 inch diameter circle. So let's see, start a 2D sketch right here. And then we'll get that nice and centered and we'll make us a 0.3 inch, 0.3 inch circle right there. And we'll go ahead and dimension its distance to each endpoint, as we saw there. Uh, 0.5. Wow, I almost got that one. This one, however, is going to be a little bit off. Did we get there? Oh, nope. Oh, I think it did. Okay, so I'm going to click on the center of the circle, and then I'm going to click on the edge and drag down, and we'll do 0.5. Perfect. All right, now let's see. Now I'm faced with the question of should I extrude it now or should I extrude it later? I'm going to go ahead and uh, do it now because I don't want to have to extrude each peg individually. I want to just extrude once and then, you know, make the pattern from that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to extrude my peg. And did they? I don't know if they specify an extrusion distance. It's giving me 0.5 inches there which seems like a logical choice given that we extruded the plate three inches. I don't think it really matters since this is sort of a, a tool thing right here. Yeah, it doesn't really specify. Looks a little shorter than that to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with 0.3. That way it'll be symmetric. Okay, so it doesn't really matter how far you extrude it, really. What we're after is what's gonna happen right now, the rectangular pattern. Now this is a pretty um, complicated button right here there's a lot of different options to choose from uh, right now what you want to choose is the first thing we're going to choose as we do with most things that we pattern we're going to choose the object we want to do right so like whether we're extruding it we choose the the profile we want to extrude if we're revolving we choose that closed loop if we're circular patterning we choose whatever we want a circular pattern here we're rectangular patterning we're going to choose the peg all right so now setting the directions is a little bit tricky Direction one, I can either make that the horizontal direction or the vertical direction. Let's go ahead and go with horizontal. And then you can see that uh, my peg wants to appear right here below instead of up here where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the direction on that. And then let's see, how many do I want? I believe I want four of them. Yes, that is right. Then direction two, I'm going to click the selector for direction two. I'm going to do the horizontal one. And uh, how many, now notice that this one was actually going the right way the first time. And uh, we'll go ahead and make six of those. That works. You can also uh, set the spacing right there. Um, you can set the distance between them. Obviously, it's one inch since there are six of them in a six inch long plate and a four, inch, four of them vertically in a four inch long plate. There, oh, that's not what I wanted to happen. All right, there we go. We'll go ahead and save that. Make sure to save it, give it that specific name. And uh, go ahead and show me both your rectangular pattern and your circular pattern. All right, thanks for watching the video. See you next time.